And we are officially live. This is the Agent Revolution podcast with your host, Mike Wall, the agent advocate, and my boys, the Rep Boys, man, the Rep Brothers, Micah and Ashley, man. What's up? How you doing, Mike, man? Appreciate you having us, bro. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Hey, hey, you know, I'm a little curious, man. I've never had anybody come on the podcast with a weapon in their hand, man. So what's that axe all about? All right, bro. Just real briefly. So uh, getting into real estate, you know, I used to be told to, to knock on lots of doors, make lots of cold calls. And it kind of was like beating a, a tree with an ax that's not sharpened, right? Just beating it, beating it until you get it. But I thought how much more efficient it is if you just take a little time to go and sharpen the, the, your, your device or your tool so that when you hit that tree, when you make contact with that client, they just go through them one after the other, one after the other. So I thought you're, you do such a wonderful job on your podcast, really taking people into the fast lane, so to speak, or into the carpool lane so that individuals can uh, can benefit and pass by all that door knock and all that stuff to, to beat their head up against the wall at the time. And uh, we appreciate it, man. So that, that was the intro on the X. Oh, brother, I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Listen, man, this show is all about helping agents sharpen their skills, and there's no better metaphor than an X. And... Uh, you know, I know you guys, we talked a little bit before the show, man. You guys are ready to drop some knowledge. I know the po the folks that are tuning in today, they want to learn more about how to be productive in a day, right? And there's only 24 hours in a day, and, and there's so there's only so much you can do. So, you know, when we talk about time management and uh, and, and being productive, you know, there, there are there several different, different facets of that. And so I, I know you guys run a really tight ship there in Las Vegas. And, uh, and, and even in the Dominican, and we can talk about that too, but what I want to, I want you guys just to kind of take it from here and then, and talk about how you guys have been so productive, um, with the 24 hours you have in every day. Okay. Would it be okay to uh, set a little bit about how we got into real estate? So you kind of know just a little bit, I don't want to spend much time because I really want to give the value, um, for the agents and the main, um, value that I'm hoping to be able to bring is how to be able to shorten and escrow in half so people can spend more time either doubling their transactions or more time with their family and their passion. But um, I thought it might be helpful to go a little bit about where we came from. No, no more than maybe a minute a pop, if that's all right. Is that okay to? Listen, brother, we got a whole hour, man. You take as long as you want. Tell us about each of you. How did each of you get into the business? Um, what was the driver for you guys? And, and uh, um, how long have you been in? And, 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 and give us the whole, give us the whole shebang. Okay, I'll let my brother start with that first then. B, how'd you get in? Well, actually, uh, we're, we're actually third generation realtors. Our our grandfather was a realtor, my dad's a realtor, and uh, Mike and I are both realtors. So it's uh, it basically been in our blood. But uh, about uh, four years ago is when I started my real estate career. I um, Before that, I spent about 10 years working for one of the largest internet companies in Las Vegas. And uh, I hurt my back. And after I hurt my back, I had time in between to, uh, to study my real estate license, and, uh, and that's when I joined Micah. He's, he was blowing things up, and he, he came, allowed me to come onto the team, and uh, uh, we've been killing it ever since. Awesome, man. That's great, Micah. What about you, man? And yeah, I'm super happy to have my brother and my team. Uh, nothing will be able to be accomplished without him, so I'm so appreciative of the things that he's done, too. So, um, well, I actually used to work, I did real estate about 15 years ago. The market tanked here in Las Vegas, so I got a job in Manhattan working at the toy store, Toys R Us. So working in uh, Times Square, Toys R Us, um, selling one particular toy, just demonstrating the toy all day. It was a little airplane that you throw and it came back to you. Um, yeah. And that's what I did uh, on the floor. So in the center of the toy universe, I was constantly in front of a lot of people. So I really started figuring out exactly that people don't want to be sold anything. They really just want to be informed about a product. So I, I fine-tuned what I said to them, and it, and it did help me, uh, fortunately, to be um, one of the top if not the top salesman there at Toys R Us Times Square at the time. So when I came back to Las Vegas, though, my wife, it was too cold for us there. So my wife um, was on board with coming back to Las Vegas, came back, signed up with a particular brokerage that I really trust and respected, uh, Brian Pelican. He did over 5,000 transactions uh, in the REOs when the market tanked. So he was making a ton of money during that time. Signed up with him, uh, got some coaching from him on that. That was much appreciated. And then we've jumped right into it. And that's been that's been the case since we've uh, gotten to the real estate. Dude, that's awesome, man. And you know what I like to talk about, too? And, and each one of you can answer this question is what are some of the lessons you learned in some of those previous endeavors 
that you still utilize today and that and that have helped you kind of become the person you are? Well, you know what? Um, when it comes to my uh, uh, original career that I was with uh, the cable company, um, just just doing a good job for the clients. You know, clients always come first, uh, making them happy and uh, really letting them know that you have their backs, uh, no matter what the uh, the situation is. And if you have their backs, the clients going to be happy, and things always end up. Um, yeah, I would say yeah, it's a very similar thing. Just putting other people first, very important. You know, I, I believe that if. I'm, I didn't have the initial goal to, to start a team. That was not my thing. In fact, in, in New York, people kept telling me to start a team and train people to do what I was doing. However, I just thought I could be more efficient at it myself. So I didn't do that. Uh, but I realize now that the, the important thing is, as long as I'm personally uh, putting the team first and putting mm -hmm. the other people on the team first, then I set the example for what they should be doing for the clients. So I just found that, you know, what, what I've learned is I got to do that. And that, that was a learning um, that, that was a trial by error in many cases, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I'm very happy to be now to, to understand that and not try to lock, lock people in with a lot of unnecessary things. Just it's got to benefit themselves and their families. That's the bottom line for the team. And it's got to benefit uh, for the client. Yeah, it's got to be a win-win, man. I totally agree. And, and what I so love about our topic today is, is a lot of times it's not the sexiest topic, but it is a foundational topic. And this is true for... The people that will enjoy this particular show are, are brand new agents, agents who have been in the business a lot for a while, and mega agents, right? Because we can, you talked about trading time for money, and we all know, I mean, I could get into the business, right, and work by myself and make a ton of money, right? But, but what I'm doing is trading time for money. And what, what happens is what you start to figure out is once you start to sell, you know, 100, 200, 300 homes a year, is that you just don't want to do that anymore, man. Because like, like I have a 15 year old and a 10 year old and I, and I have, and I love my wife. Right. And I want to be able to spend time with them. So the money, you know, if I, if you go out and make a million dollars a year and you have no life, is it really worth it? And, and I think that's the question that most agents on this broadcast and the agents who are watching the future should ask themselves. Would you guys agree? hundred percent. Yeah. That, and that's kind of what it was. We were, I was getting it to the point where I could, I could throw six transactions in in two weeks very consistently. Uh, then all of a sudden your time's being all sucked away from you. So now what do you do? Well, having reliable people in those places to be able to help you through that process, hugely beneficial. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think the, the, the really cool thing about this topic is too, it's something that's really easy to implement um, is, is time blocking and using the calendar. I mean, I have agents that come into my office in fact, I, I just had one in here today and we're, we're talking about building out your ideal day. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then and what you what you don't want to do is you don't want to build out your ideal day. And it's just something that you look at. It's something that you adhere to and something that you follow. You can get your discipline to those events in your day. And, you, and when you when you do those events that you're fully present and engaged in those particular events and you don't have any outside distractions. Is that kind of is that kind of the model you guys follow? Absolutely. Yeah. Same model. Uh, yeah, we, we, we follow that uh, strictly with our, our game plan. Uh, one of the things that Mike and I do is uh, we, we, we talk, we communicate, have great communication with our team. Uh, we have team meetings on Mondays and Fridays. And, and uh, so we can, even though the team meetings, we keep them uh, to brief, really briefly. So we don't uh, talk about unnecessary things. We keep our team meetings at 30 minutes. And yeah. then we're done after that. That's great. So let's let's really dissect this. Like I want to hear each of your stories because when we get into this business, we don't know what we don't know, man. And what we what what happens is we we either we figure out by trial and error, um, you know, and, and that and some that some people would call that the hard, learning the hard way, or we figure out by guidance and coaching, right? And so how was it for you guys that this this topic, this particular topic, became important to you in your business? And then how are you? specifically um, each of you, so both you, M Micah and Ashley, and then how are you utilizing it? And then how are you, if you meet with an agent that's new in, into your company in, or onto your team, how do you talk to them about it? Okay, um, well, it's very important to me because of the, the time that we have, you know, um, it's, it, you gotta use it wisely. You know, that's so important to be able to have the time for for your passion, what you're really passionate about as well. And helping people, you know, is something that, that I really like to do anyways. So I find that I was getting so caught up in helping people in the job and actually I enjoyed it a lot. 
but it did take away time from my wife, you know, and, you know, I'm very happy 20 years, you know, uh, for with her that I'm happy that she's able to support me through all that, you know, through that process. But I realized that, well, I've got to divide time effectively between these things just because I enjoy so something so much. We got to now bring it into that way. So that was kind of that, you know, the, the gist of, you know, why, you know, I felt it was super important to, you know, put it put into place and really dive as deep as possible. Um, so to speak, uh, sharpening that axe, you know, uh, yeah. to be able to make sure that you spend the time to be able to say, let's just spend a little time being efficient, you know, two or three hours or going to a conference or listening to a podcast like yours. And then we can use the, the remainder time of just being effective with the clients. Yeah. And, you know, the, the funny thing is when you talk about that, it, it reminds me um, is that in many cases um, I'll talk to agents and they'll tell me, you know, that they're doing all the right activities and we have, we, we can, we can get in trouble with doing the right activities because, you know, I, you have activities that are, we call dollar productive activities. In other words, you know, prospecting might be a, a dollar productive activity, right? So getting on the phones, that might be like a 10 out of 10, right? For our lead generation and like a low, like a, another right activity would be building like a, a business Facebook page, right? Um, and, and so, and that might be a one, right? And what agents I think have a tendency to do is they focus more on the ones, twos, and threes than they do on the eights, nines, and tens. And so they'll come in and meet with me and their production's not where they want it to be. And, and they'll tell me the activities they're doing. And I'm saying, yeah, those are the right activities, but you're just prioritizing them at the wrong time. Is that, do you, do you guys run into that as well? Yes, um, working in the business instead of working on the business. Uh, that's so um, important to really get that balance. Uh, spending time more that way can be so much more efficient uh, for growth. Um, we'll probably have our best year this year. Uh, actually, I'm sure we will the, where we're on pace to. And it's really because my brother has taken the time to kind of take over uh, my spot in, in the business uh, with the listings and such. And then bringing on um, uh, Brock, who's here watching us too as well, uh, as far as on the buyer side. So that allowed me to be able to take my time and energy strictly this, this year. I've almost devoted 100% of working on the business and not in it, and I've and I've seen um, exponential growth because of it. So how, in, in this will kind of set the stage, I think, for um, that agent or broker who's watching us. How is your how is your team structured right now? Give us the total layout. Well, we have uh, various agents that help us uh, with uh, with some of the showings when it comes to I guess you could say runners right now. Yeah. But our goal is to be able to help them develop into agents that can have agents underneath them as well. So we're not trying to keep them in that spot. Well, we're all about growth and bringing people in that and training them so that they can train others. Um, it's, it's myself, my brother, my good friend, Brock. We have a um, uh, producer and videographer. His name is Anthony. He's behind the film right now. Um, to help us. Oops. Sorry about that. Let me get this off here. <laughs> Listen, we, we, is, it get, isn't it? <laughs> it's the beauty of a live show, brother. We've had crying babies. We've had dogs barking. We've had roofers on the top of roofs. We, listen, we've had it all. So a phone call, that, that don't, that don't make anything. Now I got to get back to you now. Now I'm having a hard time getting back to you. Can you see me or can I not see you? I can see you and hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I do not see you. So let me get back to that, that particular page right now. I don't know yeah. how to about doing this. Sorry about this. You're good, I'm, man. I want to be able to see your eyes, though. That's uh, that's important uh, in yep. communication. So I want to make sure I can see that. Hold on, I got to go back to. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Okay, this is uh, Safari. It's Google Chrome. Yep, you're good, that's man. Why, you're good. That's why I think I found her. I think I found her in there. We go, bro. Sorry about that. Right. Now I, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, I'm a videographer, which is uh, interesting enough. Uh, Anthony, I got to tell, like, send a shout out to him too, because he's been helping us so amazing on some of the videos and we got a lot of good things planned. But uh, he actually worked on the bottom of the toy store when I was in Times Square and I worked on the top and we were back and forth as far as number one and number two in volume and sales. So it's sure enough, you know, it just happened to link up now and, and we've formulated a great team. But a lot of transaction, co our transaction coordinator, Tom, is absolutely amazing. What does Tom do for the business be? Uh, Tom saves us hours and hours of time. Um, uh, we have, uh, and also it just, it just doesn't save us time, but it also saves the uh, the buyer's time and also it saves the seller's time. Um, uh, it gets the offers accepted uh, as soon as possible. 
Uh, we have, uh, for example, we had an offer just uh, recently where the, um, we met at the property. I called the, the, um, the listing agent up. The listing agent was actually on the way to the seller to uh, present the offers. Um, my buyer wanted to submit the offer there right there on the spot. I had called Tom. Tom submitted the offer. Before we even left the property, uh, the buyer was able to sign the offer, sent it over to the agent, and got the offer accepted. Um, if I was just a one-man team trying to do this by myself, that would have never happened. Uh, the yeah. buyer was lost out of that home. The power of leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So we 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 definitely understand that as as team leaders. Um, so 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 for you guys, I mean, you've obviously you you you've built a, a a rock solid business there you've got you know all the pieces in place you're continuing to grow um some of the, the more exciting things i think um that i followed you on on facebook is is your expansion out into the dominican talk about that man yeah so that's like su super exciting uh we teamed up um with uh, tammy pack i'm not sure do you have you interviewed her before yeah tammy was on uh maybe three or four months ago. And I just actually was at a mastermind event with Tammy uh, in uh, Cincinnati for the Kentucky Derby. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw lots of her pictures with that too. So yeah, yeah um, well, we, I was out at a conference and in San Diego that uh, Kyle put together and along with Daniel Beer. And that's where I met her. She was, a, she was um, the first pre presentator and she was talking about her short-term rentals. Right. And I recognize, man, she does it like better than anybody that I've ever seen it do. And, and she had a, a website that was developed for Freddie's Berg there. And I was like, this is this could save me a lot of time. And I think it could help a lot of people to be more efficient. So I came up to her, asked her if she would like to join me on this project. I'm going to be doing down the Dominican Republic. She said, yes, that sounds wonderful. And we've been talking ever since she had made the trip down to the Dominican Republic, uh, solidify some things. We're able to uh, talk to a lot of individuals and get the, the groundwork um, laid out for that project. Um, the Dominican Republic, I'm not sure how much you know about it. Um, have you visited before, Mike? Yes, I've been there. Uh, it's been probably five years, but I've, I have been there. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's so um, I'm not sure on the real estate side how much you know about it, but uh, there's no MLS and it's pretty much the Wild West. So um, meaning they don't limit you, you know, there's no regulations on your advertising and also there's no real way to systematically that I found uh, be able to find properties in a way that uh, we're used to here in the states. So yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity that we're that we're able to be a part of, and it's going to be very fun. So, are you in effect helping build an MLS down there? That's going to be the goal. That's the end goal for sure. We're going to be taking in a lot of listings, uh, getting things lined up and organized. Uh, Tammy has reassured me with uh, Tammy Smith and Tammy Pack. Uh, both of them, my video editor calls them Tammy Squared. Um, they're, been, they're working on uh, that project as we speak. So, yeah, it's going to be not only that, um, there's a few different dynamics to it, but that's part of it is actually helping build an MLS so that when people search for homes down there, uh, they can have a better idea of what homes they can find that's going to be better for them and their families. But secondary, what I found out when I was looking for myself was I didn't quite understand supply and demand because there's no way to talk about inventory. So imagine that dilemma. Yeah, yeah. So are, are you, how did you discover this opportunity in the, in the DR? Well, a good friend of mine who actually, his son's with us here today too as well, that's helping out on the project also, uh, purchased a home in Punta Cana uh, area. Um, exact spot is Coco Tal, which is right across the street from the Melia Resort. He purchased that home there. And then um, he had told us about some of the homes he was trying to get me to be able to go in with him on an Airbnb uh, property because you can, you know, there's there's a lot of potential for there down there on the golf course. People do weddings and so on. Yeah. So um, he talked to me. Then my next question was, well, what's the ROI, right? To find out that as far as the purchase. So that kind of opened the door for extra research of my own and feeling kind of lost for when it comes to the, the the purchase side. The only way to really quantify the ROI would be is through the Airbnb website, which um, kind of opened up the opportunity for Tammy Pack and myself when it comes to coming together on that. So yeah, that was the way it came about. And um, now we're getting, we've lined up. We've had, a, I have to say, uh, um, they have a thank you for Jose down there. He's the, mm -hmm. I don't know his exact title, but I know when it comes to tourism, he's like, he's the guy, you know, uh, he handles all the tourism that comes in and out of the Dominican Republic. So he showed us around down in the DR while we were down there. He's a, he was a good friend of Russell's. 
um, yep. as well. So that's how that contact happened. And he showed us, he, went, he took us VIP route through the whole thing and introduced us to a lot of different people. Um, and it's, it's going to be amazing when it comes to getting things organized down there so that people can uh, go through that. So are you guys, um, are you guys purchasing property down there yourselves or thinking about it? Well, Ashley, the reason why I'm doing a lot of talking, I have to say too, as well, Ashley's going to be holding down the project here in uh, Las Vegas. Um, I'm not going to personally right now because I recognize the, the ability to help other people with yep. that process at the moment. So I'm, I'm, my focus is completely on that moment. Yeah, that's great, man. So you, and the reason why I'm asking you about this is because what I want people to understand is that this all, this all, you're able to do this because that you, you, you learn the, the, um, you learn the importance of leverage. You learn the importance of building out an ideal day. Um, and you've learned, you've learned how to, um, you've essentially learned how to plug in the right pieces to us, allow you to continue to do the things that you want to do and serve people at the highest level. And, and, and I want, so I, I bring it back to that because I want agents to understand that while they can do these things, they can say the same thing that you're doing just from a, from a time and leverage perspective, if they build their ideal day, like, no, we're getting some feedback from your win there. So I don't know if that's, if that's I think it's died down just a little bit. Um, but what I want people to understand, like, is, so an ideal day for you, Mike, and, and actually I'll ask you this next. What does an ideal day for you look like right now? Well, you know what? It's really just uh, relationships. You know, now since, you know, Ashley's been uh, wonderful enough to take the working uh, in the business. So just being on social media, you know, um, contacting people, taking in more uh, information, uh, watching things like your podcast, you know, so that um, I can be a bit more time efficient with uh, or more efficient with the time yeah. uh, I have. Uh, and then lining things up down the Dominican Republic, you know, putting the right people in the right places so that the project goes smoothly. Uh, we have a wonderful group that's actually watching. I can see them now uh, from the Dominican Republic that is um, tuning in because they recognize the potential that are, are in real estate down there as well that we're looking forward to helping them uh, join the team so that them and their families can benefit uh, if everything goes as planned. Yeah, so do you have do you have agents already that have joined you in the Dominican? It sounds we, like we have a lot of individuals that are interested. Okay. Um, right now we do not have, because we wanna put forth the infrastructure first and we're so cautious about making sure that that's done first and foremost uh, before anything else. I don't want to just uh, put together something that hasn't been done and given the right time and energy. Um, so I wanna be able to do that first. And yeah. then when that opens up, when the, when the flood of people come in, when they start seeing the return on investment for their money owning property down in the Dominican Republic because of the, how easily accessible and, and how price effective it currently is, yeah. um, then that, that well, I'll just open up that to all those individuals and their families. But as of right now, no, but we have a lot of people that have been already reached out to us for, that are interested in helping with that. Yeah. All right, Mr. Ashley. So, you know, obviously you're taking on a, you're, you're taking on a brunt of the, um, of the, of the working inside the real estate duties. So how has that kind of changed your life, man? Uh, well, it's uh, a lot of uh, explaining, uh, a lot of helping other uh, agents, uh, a lot of um, uh, communication. Um, I'm able to spend more time uh, with my family, uh, which is, is what I like to do uh, as long as I just have my phone with me. Uh, but I, I've noticed that uh, rather than just doing the work myself, explaining it to the other agents that we work with so they can uh, progress and, and spend more time with their family as well. So um, just uh, just using my time wisely is the, is how we, I've been able to to uh, be, uh, be the best we can be as realtors. Yeah. So do you, are you guys operating from like uh, a Google calendar or do you use calendars on your phone? How do you guys, how do you, what, what, what system do you guys use? Well, you know what? I wish we were that effective. Uh, we're, we're just not. Uh, we like the phone call the old school way, uh, just speaking with each other. We'll walk and do group text, you know, and then just making sure we're on the same page Monday and Friday. But I definitely see the potential for that in the future, and we've discussed it. But unfortunately, um, we haven't implemented it yet. Um, we just have, have been doing it kind of old school way at the, at the moment. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, listen, as long as you're following something, it doesn't matter. Those, those technologies are just in place to make what we're doing a little bit better, man. And, and obviously you guys have a lot going on and, 
and uh, are, are two pretty busy guys. You've got, you know, you've got your team in Las Vegas and what you're trying to do in the Dominican Republic. What is the, I'm just curious, like for you guys on the Vegas side, what are you trying to build that business out to look like? Well, personally, um, we're partners, uh, but uh, personally, uh, the goal is just as many people that want to uh, join a team in which they want to have individuals that can make their life easier so that like help other people grow so that they can have more time doing their passion, helping their family. So, but again, you say, I think it was uh, the last interview that you put out there uh, where you said, first you have to learn, then you have to earn. Um, I can't remember if that was you or if that was Noli but that said yeah. that, but I thought what, what a wonderful way to say something. And that's kind of the goal that I really don't see the, there's no limit to when you explain something correctly to a buyer and a seller, and it makes sense to them why they should buy in the sell. So we take a lot of time with them on the front end with that. You really convert people that would otherwise not buy into buyers. So there's no limit to the amount of people that you can work with. And we don't really see a cap. I mean, there's 6,000 uh, transactions approximately that happen in the Las Vegas, um, um, the Las Vegas Valley. If you take both sides, uh, that's both side buyer and seller side uh, every single month. Um, so where's the potential for that when you can add another two or 3,000? I mean, really, what do you need to do percentage wise to really um, to do to help a lot of families, um, you know, have the time and energy to be able to spend it with their um, with their passion? That's awesome, man. And, and you know, it's no secret that you guys are, um, you know, you, you guys are, are, are a part of the EXP family. And, and when you guys got into real estate, um, what company did you start with and were you, were you, how many companies have you been with total? Well, let Ashley start. Well, I, since I've only been in the real estate field for about four years, I've only been with one. Uh, we started with a small uh, uh, mono top brokerage. Uh, okay. So coming out to EXP is, um, it's, uh, it's, it's been awesome so far. It's only been about a week since we've been out with EXP, but so far we're loving it. Let's, let's talk about like, um, Let's talk about why you guys made the move. Obviously, you guys are turning and burning, man. You guys are kicking butt. Um, you're at a you're at a mom and pop, and and you know you 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 hear about this company called EXP, and and then what happens to you guys? Okay, so I'll take that one because that was the initial of me trying to get the team over to the the thought pattern of EXP was something you know that um, I was I was concerned I wasn't say I concerned about it, uh, but I wanted to share with them because I knew it had to be best was for them and their family as well. But um, to answer that question, um, coming over to EXP, I had saw Jennifer um, Warner and then also Terry Thomas uh, is how I ended up getting over here. I saw them switch over teams and I was like, whoa, wait a minute now, what's this thing about EXP? So I, I called her up, she took the time and energy to spend an, um, uh, an hour with me on the phone explaining it a little bit. Yeah. And then I'm going down to a Craig Proctor conference uh, down in Florida in Orlando. I, I go, I went regularly to those because my um, coach and uh, the owner of the brokerage, Brian Pelican, um, was coach for Craig Proctor. Yeah. So I was able to access the, the conventions very regularly. So I recognized the, the value of that. But what I saw with EXP on the transfer was uh, once I was able to talk to her, I could access a lot of that information and I didn't have to pay any money. Yeah. That was a kicker. Or I didn't have, even though, I, of course, Brian was, was nice enough to let me have access to that. But I was able to get all that knowledge invited to that first meeting with, with Kyle and Daniel and Jennifer and Terry and all these top performers and, and Tammy and, and a, what, way more. And we were all sharing information so freely. And I was like, wow, this is powerful when it comes to it. Um, there's nothing like it. Um, that I can think of in the real estate game in which people are willing to help other people to that level um, and and do it with so such freedom, even being on the show with you. Uh, it's amazing that how that came about. I would have never came across you if I didn't come across EXP and, and also all the things we're doing in the Dominican Republic. We wouldn't be able to advance the way it was without uh, your help. So that's the transition. I explained it to them, the, the benefit of it. And uh, the rest it just falls into place when it comes to the monetary side of it. It's really about just the people and getting to know people that are doing things more efficiently. Yeah. What was the conversation like when you, so you, obviously you're probably the driving force uh, behind the move, but I, you have, um, you've got Ashley, you've got other team members. How did you present the idea to them, Micah? Um, I just said, well, hey, we got to check out this thing with EXP. Can I share it with you guys and tell you a little bit more about it? Uh, I played a video that Terry had sent me 
uh, to uh, a few of the members, you know, Ashley first, and then of course Brock, and and started sharing that uh, the idea behind it, and asked them if it was making if it made sense to them the same way that it made to me, and um, and I think I think they trusted me, you know, with the fact that I, I haven't stirred, you know, stared them too wrong, you know, and yeah. make decisions, and which I'm really appreciative of. But you know, I wanted them to be educated on why um, they also could feel that it was a wise decision. And and I asked them, and I left it up really to them. You know, yeah. um, if if you guys think we should do it, we should do it. If if not, I understand that too. I would um, I would just like to discuss why. Yeah, and and so for, what was the most appealing thing about EXP to you, Micah? Just getting the getting that question. So you the other one. <laughs> Well, I like the fact that there was no brick and mortar. Um, we we had this office down at our last brokerage, and uh, very rarely do we even go down there. Um, just the fact that we can do everything from the, the comfort of our own home, uh, we can uh, communicate uh, right from the office, and uh, we've been noticing that having um, our clients actually meet at our home office. And uh, we've been loving, and the clients been loving uh, coming to our home office and just sitting there in the living room. Uh, giving that one-on-one -on -one attention and it saves us time and, and driving to the office, bidding them up and uh, we've noticed that our buyers and our sellers love it. Yeah, and just a second that too, uh, Mike, real briefly. Um, we just had recently, where we took a lot of video for it, but we haven't had, we have the content, but we haven't developed it yet. But yeah. we had multiple um, buyer's appointments and listing appointments, uh, no, buyer's appointments, I'm sorry, in the house at one time going on. And uh, that was kind of cool to be able to experience that and then be going back and forth with that that video. And he actually threw it up on the big screen at his house, made them feel very comfortable with it. Uh, they felt more than that family atmosphere. And it was it was amazing. And if anybody does have to reschedule because of various uh, life circumstances, then you're still at the house with your family. So yeah. again, how great is that? So let, let's throw in some bonus. Let, let's throw in some bonus. Let's throw in one bonus topic because you keep you keep talking about video and, and we know the we know how important video is you've actually hired a videographer right and, and a lot of other top agents i've talked to have hired a videographer why this emphasis on video right now for you guys okay um it's absolutely we what i realized is we were getting a lot of referrals from past clients that we helped and and uh, really took the time to do but you know sometimes they would all refer like four people to us so i thought to myself well if those people see the value in recommending us, well, what if we documented the transaction from front to back so that now other people can see it? And especially since I was considering the project down in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. I was like, well, how are people going to trust me being down in the Dominican Republic? How, when they Google Mike Arette, what comes back? Well, I have my reviews, but is there anything that's better than reviews? Because a lot of people are even fictitious about reviews these days, unfortunately, because the way people are. Yeah. When you see some, when you close a deal and you video record someone, you ask them, how was the transaction like when you purchased a home or how was it like, was there anything that we could do better? And then you hear their sincerity when they just pour it out of them, how awesome that you were and you see it in their face. That's a hard thing to fake. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it, brother. Um, so how are you leveraging that content? Are you, are you, are you putting it out on social media? Are you, are you putting it on a website? Yes. So, so again, this is a transition. So we're working on that continuously to be able to do that. But if you fell back on our Facebook feed and looked at some of the, the interaction that we had with Pascal, because yeah. it's, it's big, bro, that you're, you're dealing with professionals that are in that same field that are business minded and uh, they need the help with, for them and their families to have more time and be more time efficient. So the, the of course, uh, Instagram, this upcoming generation, um, they're looking at buying homes too as well and what's best for them and their family. How do they get a hold of great realtors that help other families out and save them time and money? So a variety of ways, yes, that we're trying to be able to do that. But um, interesting enough, um, I'm going to be going to, with uh, with Kyle and um, and Brian um, in La Jolla uh, to their special event um, pretty soon. It's the second and I think the second and third of next month mm -hmm. uh, that's coming up here, and it's been two days just on video content and how to be able to implement that. Uh, of course, you know, have you had a chance to interview them or I'm sure you're familiar with them with the XP? Yeah, family. Kyle's def Kyle is, I think, like the third or fourth person I had on here. So, yes. Yeah. So we're super excited about that, too, as well. Just learning as much as we can, again, between, um, you know, your podcast, learning stuff like that when it comes to the video and then also, you know, meeting up with people like that through the EXP family. Um, 
hey, it's 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 the, the wave of being able to get in front of more people and show them how you can help them and their families. Love it, man. I love it. You guys are just crushing it, man. Is there anything that um, I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, well, you know, one thing that I was wanting to go into, but I can leave this for another time for anybody that's interested, you know, um, was how to specifically shorten the time uh, uh, of an escrow down so much. I mean, we get, if you can close them instead of 45 days, close the escrows down to 15, each escrow or 15 or 20. And then on top of that, um, get the home into escrow quicker than let's any other. Agent. Micah, Micah, let's do it now, brother. Listen, we, we saved the best for last, dude. Let's, let's dig into it, man. This is the best stuff right here this, because this is good the stuff. The rest of the stuff was about me. That doesn't matter. Uh, you know, about the team. I mean, the team, of course, we, I, I love, but really I wanted to give something practical for individual agents to be able to implement immediately when they interact with somebody so they can do that. So you're cool with us uh, talking about that still? Yeah, give us the goodies, man. Let's go. All right. Now, I, I did have to write write some of it down. I try to get my thoughts together on it because normally we would go through this in, in kind of a presentation. Yeah, no, but, all right. So here we go. <laughs> and I'll try to make it question-based so I don't do a lot of the talking, okay? Okay. On that side of it as well. All right. So... All right, so the breakdown is this. Um, when, when we first meet with a seller, obviously you wanna go over and be very particular on the time that you spend with them, educating them on the value of their home, right? Um, what have you, know? Uh, I guess I wanna ask that. Uh, um, as far as kickback that you may have, I don't know if you've ever had this before, but often people say to me, hey, you're the realtor expert, you tell me like what the value is. Yeah. Which sometimes makes it difficult as a realtor when you're wanting to educate them on the values that they can come up in their mind if the pricing the home a certain way is reasonable. Yeah. So, so that's uh, that's the first thing. Well, the question is, well, how do we do that? You know, right? How how far do we really take that? And what examples do I use to overcome that particular uh, roadblock? And there was two that came to mind that I try to share with them. Uh, one of them was uh, talking about. Um, that has been said that the, that the three most stressful times in a person's life are often when a person loses a loved one, or when a person uh, goes through a divorce, or when a person si sells or buys a home. So I asked them, would, you, would it be okay if we took a little bit more time on the front end of that to explain the process so that we can alleviate, hopefully, a lot of that stress and anxiety for you and your family? So they often, of course, say yes on that one. Love it. And then I share with them, uh, or I share with them a horror story with Ashley. I don't know if do you remember that one with the uh, the sixty thousand dollars with the appraisal issue, and how yeah. important that was. Yeah, that was uh, last year sometime. Um, uh, I believe uh, it, it's really important to express to the seller about the appraisal. They, they don't understand they, they, if they price it too high. We we show them the before we go in, even uh, open up um, uh, go live on the listing. We explain to them that we're going to have to get this home to appraise. Yeah. And, uh, so why do we list ten thousand dollars over the market when there's not a comp to support that value? So we try to just express to them that we try to come five to ten thousand dollars under the market, so we bring on multiple buyers and yeah. uh, be able to choose a buyer that can make the difference up in cash. And we've noticed that uh, the sellers are all for it every time. Yeah. And so so right there. So now to, to second that with Ashley, so we covered a few of the, the a few of the bullet points. But once you're able to share with them, and we could go into particulars and talk to that for a while, but not to, to stay on the subject too long. Yeah. Um, but once we're able to um, explain to them why they should um, price the home a certain way, they come up with the, the thought themselves. That's what we really do. We say, well, what do you think is reasonable before we, we go any further? Then they'll say, well, this. And, 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 and like, yeah, you're, you're probably right. So we also look at the competition as well. We, we want to look at uh, photos of, of the competition, even possibly taking them to the house, uh, if that's if that's a possibility. And then also, how long has that house been on the market? Because if you have a home now that, that you're looking at that's better than yours in your own mind, and it's been on the market for 60 days, well, what do you think that the client's going to now potentially do for you, for you? What's reasonable to them, right? Right. So, so that being said, uh, once we get them, so then we say, well, hey, well, now we know that that's what you think the home is worth. Well, let's take the second step. Why should you post or why should you allow us to market it five to ten thousand dollars below that? Right. So that's that. This is this is again going to shorten the time. So why would that be important to do? And, and how can you know, why should you guys consider that? 
um, is what they'll ask us. Um, so the, the answer to that question is, well, imagine if a home was priced five or 10,000 and you're looking, you're going on your search to purchase a house. You come across a house that you see like that. Do you think you'll be more likely to rush down there because it's priced so competitively? Or do you think you'll take your time on getting there? And of course they all agree, rush down there fast. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we said, okay, that's wonderful. So now do you think there's more buyers at your house, uh, potential buyers at your house uh, for the open house? And they say, yes. And uh, so we say, all right, sounds wonderful. Are you okay with us doing a hold back for a week? And I'll let Ashley. Yeah, so the way we do that is we go live on a Monday. Uh, we do no showings uh, okay. all the way till Sunday. So we have six days on the market, no showings. Sunday, open house between 1 to 3 o'clock. Love so it. Man. Love what we do is all the people come at one time between that time frame. And, um, and we typically get multiple offers on Monday. And our, our sellers love it because now we're not going to inconvenience them on asking them about appointments and letting them leave the home throughout the week. Uh, and we've noticed that we get multiple offers almost every time. And you're over asked, right? That's the case. So here's the kicker. So then we once since we have multiple offers, then what we do is we send out a highest and best due back by Wednesday at five o'clock. But yes. here's the kicker, though. This is the biggest thing that I have to say in this whole thing. When I tell them I'm going to call each individual offer, explain to them how we're in a multiple offer situation. Highest and best do back by five o'clock on Wednesday, but uh, also that the owner is very reasonable when it comes to the appraisal contingency. So more than likely, the the buyer will never pay more than what their bank says the home is worth. So that's the first mm -hmm. key to it. And then I say the second key is uh, on top of that, um, I know you probably already know this. This is me talking to the buyer's agent, but every ten thousand dollars is going to change the buyer's payment approximately about fifty three dollars. So how would your buyer feel if they lost the house of their dream in a multiple offer situation for $106 a month? And then what you start seeing with the offers is they go up ten and $20,000. So now we're in a position where initially we priced it uh, 10,000 to 5,000 below the market. Now we're 10 or 20,000 in some cases over the market. So now Dude, we have that is money. That is money. You know what I like about that too, is you're not relying on the agent to relay or you're not relying on the agent to, uh, generate that information. You're generating that information to give to the agent, so the agent can then pass that along to their client. That is money right there, man. So, well, wait till you see that here. This next part. This is what what got really exciting was this part. And I've been told to slow down because I once I get excited about something, I get talk kind of fast. So you please please bear with me. You're good, man. Makes me happy because every time this this works so good, and I know it can help so many families. So that's why why I say that. Um, so now we're in a position where we have multiple offers in most cases, right? Yeah. So we bring that back to the seller, uh, uh, the seller of the property, and we can shift and sort through not only money but also timing and motivation, right? Because we know we also ask each individual buyer um, um, questions like why are they, why did they choose this house? What's their circumstance? Because we want to know more than likely if this person is going to stay in the escrow or not. So we can eliminate again the anxiety and anxiousness of uh, the seller and right. ourselves and other realtors, right? But so now it's time for the appraisal. So you're $20,000 over the appraisal. What do you do? Well, remember, what do you have on file now that you can hand to the appraiser because of the way that you priced yeah. a full load of offers? Yeah. Right. And then also all the evidence to be able to support why, because we do the research for the appraiser. Basically, we do their job because appraisals are subjective. There's no yeah. place on the planet where the exact house is on the exact lot. Right. So even something as simple as this one's on a busy street. Right. And this one's inside the neighborhood. Can, yeah. And then using that with the appraiser and doing that research for the appraiser, we can we pretty much get our value ten to twenty thousand dollars over the appraised value for the client almost every time. Wow. How did you guys figure this out, man? Well, it was really being in the trenches. I, I felt that yeah. me it was me being in the trenches during the transaction. I thought about that. And it was it was me being so like dealing with the challenges and then looking for ways to be able to figure out ways around it. And uh, so once we found that out, I was just like, bro, this is amazing. And we even talked about it too. Like, man, should we even share this with anybody? Because every time we get in front of a listing, you can imagine what percentage of listings we get because yeah. we explain this to them um, every single time. We do the other stuff that people teach, but I would say this thing, if, if, if implemented, bro, and, and any agent that's out there that's watching, please try this out. You're talking about the competition who doesn't know this stuff when explained correctly, the frustration for you and your team will be alleviated and the amount of money that you can charge because you have value, not because you're overcharging the client, 
But if you're making them an extra 20,000 bucks, then are they okay giving the extra five? Yeah. Most cases they are. Dude, that is so money, man. And and, and, and people are going to want to rewind that and watch that or listen to that back, man, because that is such good, good information. Um, there's not a lot of agents that are bringing that kind of value. In fact, what I find in a market like this is that agents bring less value because they don't think they have to bring as much because things are selling so quickly. You know what I mean? So that is so good, man. And, and I'm so glad that you guys shared that with our audience because I think a lot of people will connect with that and be able to implement their, that into their business right away. Sure hope so, bro. Yeah, that's, and, uh, and there's another thing too on another, another time, but uh, on the buyer side, I didn't, I didn't jot this down. There is, uh, there's, it works exactly the opposite way on the buyer side. So getting offers accepted, if there's 10 or 20 offers, we yeah. get our offers accepted. So we could, again, it's saving time and money for, for the, the buyer, the client that you're helping, and then also for the realtor that's representing the buyer. Um, we can share that at another time or just if anybody's interested, let me know, you know, and then I'll be happy to freely give that information and help them out for them and their families. So are you guys, are you doing like an escalation clause on the buyer side? There's pro there's a whole bunch of things. There's probably a, there's probably another 10 different top things because again, there's, there's those type of things that are very efficient as well that are included in that, but yeah. there's probably another nine or 10. That, 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 that align up the same way that we just talked about a few different options there. So yes, and also a whole bunch more. All right, we'll leave that as the teaser, brother. Uh, listen, man, thank you so much, uh, both of you, Ashley and Micah, for taking some time out of your day, man, to join us uh, on the podcast and, and uh, share your wisdom. I truly wish you the best. I know you guys are gonna do great things, not only in Las Vegas, but also in the Dominican Republic. Um, if, if, if there are agents out there who want to learn more about, you know, your systems and processes or they just want to connect with you to learn how to grow their business uh, or they're interested in EXP, how do you recommend that they reach out to you, Micah, Ashley? Well, Facebook is great. You know, Facebook, um, I am me or, you know, if you want to comment down below, you know, that, that'd be great uh, on how they enjoyed this particular podcast. Um, any way that they want to reach out, I'm just there to help, you know, and, and the team too, everybody's educated on the same way. So anybody that wants to, to learn what, what, uh, what's working for us, but we just want them to have, again, more time and time for their passion uh, and or their family. Awesome, man. I love it. Are you guys coming to the shareholder event in uh, in, in uh, Orlando? Uh, maybe. Uh, we may make our way down there. Uh, however, because we're doing the thing with Kyle uh, beforehand, yeah. um, it may be a little too tough to be able to make it back over there. But I may fly out there for four days. Um, initially, I was going to end up going to the Dominican Republic to get things rolling. But um, are you going to be there? I will be there, brother. And I will also be in Las Vegas in October. And I hope you guys are there to host. Oh, bro. Love it, bro. Definitely. We'll hook up in October. And um, I think now uh, knowing that it would be great to go down there even for four days to the summit. That'll be our first time uh, deal, uh, going down there. So yeah, bro. We'd love to see you. Awesome, man. Thank you guys so much, man. Let's stay connected. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs>